We live in a time where we have the ability to compare and contrast our lives with everyone else's timeline. However, the only timeline that we should really be concerned about is God's. The word of God says that he has fashioned all of our days, the good and the bad. Every one of them has been written down before the foundations of this earth. Therefore, we never have to worry about being left behind or missing out just because we haven't reached certain goals that the rest of this world seemingly has. And if our worth is placed in superficiality, we will lead a purposeless life in bondage to the opinions of men and slaves to their agendas rather than following God. Hi, my name is Alicia and today we're discussing why we should never compare ourselves with anyone else and why we need to remain faithful in our journey at any cost. I will also be interpreting some dreams. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. In a dream, I saw a woman named Peggy who was in her 60s. Peggy had two friends. She had one that was younger than her and she had another friend named Annie who was about 80 years old. Peggy allowed the younger friend to borrow her car for a couple of hours. While the younger friend was gone in Peggy's car, Annie, the older friend, began to sow negative seeds in the mind of Peggy about her younger friend. It was obvious in the dream that Annie was severely jealous of Peggy's younger friend. The symbols that stood out to me in this dream was the car, Peggy's name, and Annie's name. We know that in dreams, cars can be symbolic of a lot of different things such as ministry, business, generally where you're going in life. In this dream, Peggy's car was representative of Peggy's life. So Peggy was sharing her life with her younger friend and Annie, her older friend, could not handle it. Peggy's name means child of light. Annie's name means grace. Annie's name is a derivative of the name Anna. In the word of God, we read about Anna. She was an elderly prophetess around the age of 84 to 104. Anna was from the tribe of Asher, which is translated as happy. There's only a couple of verses that tells us about Anna, but from what we read, we know that Anna is a widow. She was only married for seven years before her husband passed away. So therefore, Anna had a reason to become bitter with God. Yet we find in the scripture that she was faithful to God. Despite everything that Anna had gone through, she was content. She was happy with her life and it showed in her devotion to God. The scripture says that Anna was at the temple day and night, worshiping and fasting and praying. Had Anna been anywhere else, had she been married or she was raising children or she was taking care of grandchildren or she was running a multi-million dollar company, Anna would not have been in the position that she was in because she was right there in the temple, in the position to announce the birth of Jesus. She was right there to lead those who was looking for redemption and deliverance to Jesus. Quite possibly, had she been anywhere else, we would not be reading about her in the scripture today. But then that, Anna would have never been satisfied doing anything else because satisfaction does not come from marriage alone. It does not come from riches alone. It does not come from fame or fortune, from materialistic possessions. Satisfaction and joy only come from being in the position that God ordained for us before the foundations of this earth. So in this dream, Annie, whose name means grace, was worried about Peggy, whose name means child of light, establishing a relationship with a younger friend. Annie was worried that someone else was getting ready to take her place. But what Annie failed to realize is that she had to grace to be herself and because she was herself that no one could ever take her place. Sometimes we look around and we watch God and we watch what he's doing in the lives of others. We perceive somehow that we're being replaced. We perceive somehow that God is blessing them over us. We perceive somehow that we're being left behind, that someone else is walking in the blessings that we've been promised. We compare our lives with others wondering why it's taking so long for us to be blessed, why things seem so easy for everyone else. We compare the lowest points of our life with the highest points of someone else's. The truth is, is that everyone has his or her path to walk. And sometimes those paths can appear straightforward and sometimes they can look like winding trails. It all depends on what God has ordained for you to walk in. It all depends on what he has caused you to carry into birth in this earth. Some years ago, I can remember I was on my way to work. I was walking to my car from my apartment and I watched this other lady as she walked from her apartment. She left her apartment after I did, but she got to her car before I did. And she had pulled off and left the parking lot before I ever even got to my car. I was so busy watching her that I couldn't even get to my car. I was wondering how in the world did she get to her car before I got to my car. And then it dawned on me that she was able to get to her car so quickly because all she had on her shoulder was a purse. I had an arm full of things that I was carrying. That's why it took longer. When you have been called to carry more, when you have been purposed for 
for greater. It often seems like God has forgotten about you. On the contrary, he has not forgotten. God is intentional and his path for you is intentional. In a dream, I saw a woman inside of a room where there were these three weighted pink balls on the ground. I saw two flights of stairs, one on each side of the room. The woman was to choose one of the weighted balls and then walk up the stairs with it. Even though she was tempted to pick up one of the smaller balls that weighed less, she knew that she was supposed to pick up the heaviest ball and then walk up the stairs. Then she walked up the stairs where there was a kitchen area. When she got up the stairs, there was this world famous singer who was elevated inside of a dirty kitchen. The woman with the heavy pink ball was elevated at her same height, at her same position. There were people around this singer congratulating her and giving her accolades on her great achievements. But the singer was looking to the woman with the pink ball for approval. And so the woman told the singer the truth in love. The symbols that stood out to me in this stream were the weighted balls, the color pink, the two flight of stairs, the dirty kitchen, and of course the celebrity singer. The color pink can represent a number of things in the word of God. However, in this dream, it represented love and a right relationship with God. The weighted balls were those type of balls that you use inside of the gym when you're exercising. And because it was the shape of a ball that represents the globe. So this means that the woman in a dream had a weight of a call to the world. Because a kitchen is where we prepare food, in a dream it represents a place where we prepare spiritual food. So the celebrity in the dirty kitchen represents Represents dirty messages or words being released. Stairs in a dream represent elevation, but not an easy elevation because that would be an elevator. The fact that there were two flights of stairs in the room on each side of the room and multiple shapes of balls, smaller balls than the one that the woman picked up, meant that someone would come along with an easier way. Someone would be able to pick up a lighter ball and walk up the stairs. But this woman had to take a harder route and we see why when she gets up the stairs because she had to match the level of elevation and influence of the celebrity figure that was looking for someone to lead her in the right direction. She had to go through the necessary steps so that she could have the weight to match the influence of the person that she was called to influence. This dream sort of reminds me of the Apostle Paul and how he had to go through so much suffering. He was abducted, he was beaten, he was threatened, he was arrested, he was accused in lawsuits, he was ridiculed, he was ignored, he was even snake bitten. Because the Apostle Paul received so many spiritual revelations from heaven, God allowed a certain amount of warfare in his life so that he will remain humble. But it was all necessary because he had a call to the world. He had a call to the Gentile nations and he had to be whipped into shape so that he could handle it. Second Corinthians 12, eight through nine says, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough, always available regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself effectively in your weakness. Here the apostle Paul is pleading with the Lord to take a thorn away from him, this thing that Satan sent to him, but God wouldn't do it. Instead, he tells Paul to rely on his grace. God allowed the enemy to buffet him. The word for buffet is kolophozo. It means to give a blow with the fist, to treat with violence and humiliation. God gives Apostle Paul all these mighty visions from heaven so that he can fulfill his duties on earth. But at the same time, he's engaging in these spiritual fist fights from hell. But for every call, for every individual's walk in life, there is a certain amount of grace that is released to counteract the enemy that will come to try to tear you down. The Apostle Paul was equipped to handle each blow. He was equipped to handle the violence. He was equipped to handle the humiliation because God had given him the grace to do so. This is why we should never envy what anyone else has. We should never envy their lives, their platforms, their marriages, their businesses, their connections. Because if we can handle the battles that they receive, then we should not desire the life that they have. More than that, no matter how appealing someone else's life appears, we would never be truly happy in someone else's shoes. Your feet will only grace to walk your path. And because God designed you, he knows the path that will complete you. I dreamed of a woman named Jill. And then I heard, meet God at a point of death of all your longings and belongings. The name Jill means child of God. The apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians that I die daily. Meaning that in this life, as children of God, the only true happiness that we'll experience is when we die to what we think that we want and accept what God knows that we truly need. This dream reminds me of in the gospels where the rich man came and kneeled down before Jesus and asked him what he needed to do to gain eternal life. Jesus then told him to sell everything that he had and then follow him. Of course, we know the rich man refused. But why did Jesus tell him to sell all of his things? And it's not because Jesus had anything against true wealth. 
had issue with people who put all of their worth inside of their net worth and what they own or what they can hold in their own two hands. The word of God says that God will give us the desires of our heart, but it also says that first we must commit our ways to him. And it also says that we must delight in him. Well, after we delight in God, and after we commit our ways to him, then his desires become our desires. And so in essence, he's really giving us the desires of his heart, the desires that he had for us before we even breathed our first breath in this earth. The rich man, he was incomplete. Eternity was crying out of him, but he couldn't let go of his idea of what happiness looked like. He wasn't willing to pay the price of letting go of what he had on this earth to see what he could gain in eternity. There's a price that you have to pay to be you. There's a price that others have to pay to be who they are. I'm not willing to pay anyone else's cost because I know that I don't have the grace to do so. Rather, I choose to leave behind what I think that I want, what I see others doing and how I see them living to focus on what God has purposed for my own life because it's there that I know that I will find satisfaction. It's there that I know that I'll find the perfect balance between the grace and the warfare. It's there that I know that I can firmly stand in what he gives me. The word of God says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. That word fearfully is yare. It means to be in awe of, reverence, honor, respect. The word wonderfully is pala. It means to distinguish, to put a difference, to set apart. You were created by a God of awe and wonder, and when he did so, he specifically made you different. He made you different for a reason, because the word of God also said he fashioned all of your days. That word for fashion is yatsar. It means squeezed into shape, molded into form, as a potter shapes. So as God designed you, he designed your days to match. As he formed and shaped you in your mother's womb, he formed your tomorrow. Before you were even birthed into this world, your days were already mapped. So to say that you're behind because you see others moving a little bit swifter than you are is to say that God has made a mistake. In Romans 9, God proposes a question. He asks the vessel, who are you to ask how the potter shapes his vessel? He asks man, who are you to arrogantly ask God why you have made me this way? When God formed you, he knew exactly what he wanted to pour into you. And he knew exactly what it would take to get what he put in you out of you. Job was a very blessed man. He had a large family, children, great wealth, friends. But then all of a sudden these things were taken away from him because we know God allowed the enemy to bring a little warfare in his life to touch everything that he had. God wasn't concerned because he knew what he had put inside of Job. He knew that Job had the grace to handle the warfare. He also knew that even though Job was blessed, that he wasn't blessed enough. He knew that he had put inside of Job a double portion. Therefore, Job began to walk through some dark days. He lost his family, his children, his wealth, his friends. His own wife told him that he should go ahead and curse God and just die. His skin melted off his body. Disease ate through him and poured out of him like water. He even felt like God was using him as target practice. So mentioned in one verse that God, you made me and you shaped me, but now you're breaking me. He said despite his tears that God's hand was continuously heavy upon him that God would not let up. He had many complaints with God about what he was allowing into his life. But eventually Job had enough strength to stand up and say that I know that my Redeemer lives. He knows the way that I take and after he has tried me I will come out as gold. He said no matter what he was going through that his feet would continue to follow God's steps. The word to know is yada. It means observation, care, and a point. Meaning that every step that Job was taking through his personal valley of the shadow of death, he knew ultimately that God appointed, God was observing, and that God cared. Because we know that God eventually answers Job. But God doesn't show up in the sunshine. He doesn't appear on a cloud. He doesn't show up on a rainbow. The scripture said that God answered Job in a whirlwind. And that word whirlwind is translated as a storm. And he finally asked Job, why are you questioning my authority? Why are you questioning my wisdom? Because God already knew that he had graced Job to be Job. I don't know if you've ever felt like God's target practice, but I have. I don't know if you've ever felt like God has forgotten you, but I have. I don't know if you've ever felt left behind, but I have. Just when you think you can't take anymore and just when you think God is about to show up he shows up but he does not show up with your fairy tale dreams he doesn't show up bearing gifts he shows up in the middle of the storm and asks you what your problem is why are you questioning his authority why are you questioning your path because he knows what he's doing in your life 
It may be a fact that sometimes we feel left behind. It may be a fact that sometimes we feel overlooked. It may be a fact that it seems like everyone is outrunning us. But the truth is that the Lord will never leave nor forsake us. The truth is that no matter where we are in life, no matter what we're experiencing, no matter how long we've been in it, God has not forgotten you. He is right there observing us with care. He has appointed the very steps that we're taking. We must trust the authority and wisdom of God because he knows what he put inside of us. Galatians 6, 4 says, but each one must carefully scrutinize his own work, examining his actions, attitudes, and behavior. And then he can have personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to another. The word for another used there is heteros. It means another of a different kind. Because we were all created differently, we all have unique paths. Different doesn't mean better and it doesn't mean worse. It simply means unique. You will never see two butterflies that look exactly the same. Even though they all go through a process called metamorphosis, they will never come out looking exactly the same. When they break free from the cocoon of butterflies, you can't tell which one is more beautiful because in their own way, they're each distinct and they're each unique. Who God has graced you to be is uniquely beautiful, but not only that, the path that he has you on is uniquely wonderful. And even if it takes you a little bit longer to accomplish certain goals, remain faithful on the path, on the journey where God has placed you, knowing that he knows exactly where you are. You are graced to be you. Father, thank you today for individuality. Thank you for taking your time with us. You fashioned us according to your own specific design. So we thank you that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. We are a designer's original with a path to match. Order our steps according to your path, dear Lord. Guide our steps according to your purpose. Give us our focus back. Cause us to focus staunchly on the road ahead of us and not anyone else's timeline. We put our trust in you and your divine timeline only today. We release anxiousness and fear associated with being left behind because we know that you are always on time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate you all for watching and for subscribing to this channel. I pray that you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and a great upcoming week. Thank you for watching.